Welcome to the Startup Showcase. I'm your host, Scott Katoon, and this is Technory Live from WGN Radio, where Chicago's top tech founders and entrepreneurs come to share their story. Alrighty, so we're sitting in front of me, Lindsay Sywick. Got it out quick, right? Yes. Yes, I got it right. I got a <laughs> well name done. right. And I got it out really quick so I didn't lose anything. Uh, you are the executive director at My Favorite Outfit. Yes. This is a unique uh, thing, I think. I think there's a lot of companies, particularly in fashion, that are working in the, uh, I guess we'd say, uh, working in the, There's a, I guess they're mission-driven, put it that yeah. way. Lots of mission-driven. You guys, it seems like, are literally mission-driven first and foremost, and then there's sort of the back-end side of it. So kind of give right. us a rundown on what, what exactly – uh, my favorite outfit is. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and our mission is to empower at-risk youth in low-income schools through fashion. Very cool. Yeah. So how, how exactly does that work? Because, I mean, I feel like uh, I always thought younger kids were always more fashion-forward than, than I. I mean, I wear, like, the same outfit every day. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, do you, how do you use fashion to inspire kids, I think? So we do it through two different programs. Um, one is pop-up workshops. That's our most popular program. Um, and that really works on building self-esteem in young girls. So self-esteem is the number one cause of low grades and poor attendance in school. So we go into these schools. We start with girls from grade six to eight. And we try to instill positive self-esteem from that young age. So. We do that through different activities that our volunteers lead them through, um, teaching them about the link between self-esteem and the way you dress, um, building their self-confidence, their self-respect, the difference between self-expression and self-objectification. Um, and then after that, we put what they learned to work and we have them shop from our donated clothing pop-up that we set up in their school. Very cool. Yeah. So how did, how did this thing kind of come to be? Because I feel like this is one of those things where you almost you know, you almost sit back and be like, how did I not think of, like, how did we not think of this? Because, you know, I, I remember one of the most popular uh, weeks of the year for us, this is in high school, obviously a little bit later on, mm -hmm. was fashion week for seniors. Right. So they would have like all these different clothing type of, you know, wear whatever you want all, all week long. And then they would have a fashion runway where people got to actually get all dressed up and fixed up. Girls got to get dressed up and fixed up and, and have a former model come in and tell them like, here's how you walk and here's how it looks good. Yeah. And, and all stuff. And everyone loved it. I mean, they literally was like, it was your day to shine, I guess, is the way that they would put it. I actually signed up for it and then didn't show up, but that's, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't my shiny day. Um, but, you know, this is one of those things that I feel like makes perfect sense. It's so logical, but right. yet you guys came up. How, how did this get started? So our founder, Jacqueline Perlman, um, she used to work with another nonprofit um, going into low-income schools, and she saw the need for it immediately. These kids there weren't comfortable in their clothing. You can tell it was like a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down of a hand-me-down. So she originally started it by just collecting clothes from friends and families and going into schools and setting up these pop-up boutiques where kids could just shop from clothing. Um, and then the more research that was done and the link between self-esteem and low grades um, and poor graduation rates and student and college enrollment amongst these students, um, we saw the need to build upon it and just to really advance the curriculum and make more of an impact with these girls. How would you say you're seeing, I mean, obviously you mentioned the grades and things like that, but right. how, how are you seeing, you know, real time reaction from kids? What has the reaction been, say in the beginning to now, obviously you guys have got a name for yourselves and right. people are probably signing up for it all the time. How is this received by kids and what has been the impact on those maybe earlier earlier kids? Um, we hear back from the faculty at the Chicago schools that we work with um, so frequently. They want us to come back continuously because the girls, they immediately see a difference in the way that the girls sure. act. Um, a lot of these girls, it goes beyond what we're doing too. A lot of them don't have great home life. So just showing that someone's in there and someone cares about their success, yeah. um, I think makes a huge difference. And the schools that we work with, we work directly with the school counselors. So they're reporting back to us like metrics on the girls' attendance rates, goals that they're achieving, that they're studying for themselves that they weren't doing before. Um, so we see immediate results, Very cool. even from just the two hours that we're in these pop-ups with them. So as this grows, are you guys planning to go to different cities or are you planning on just doubling down here in Chicago and maybe coming with other sort of other iterations of this? Like what, how, how do you make this even a bigger, how do you make an even bigger impact with what is, in my opinion, like a really great idea, a really simple idea? So we're doing a few things. Um, locally here in Chicago, we're currently piloting a Fashion 101 program at Evanston High School. 
Um, so that's an after school program where we have mentors and our My Favorite Outfit staff go in and immerse the students in fashion education and garment construction. So by the end of the school year, they have a complete portfolio that they can use um, to submit with college applications and with scholarships, um, something that we also help with them with at the end of the program. I see like also a, a lot of selfie stick usage like must go up as well. The girls are now walking around <laughs> with their cameras wanna, and things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just the annoying, that's that's the uh, one byproduct that everyone's like, rah, this yeah. isn't really good. I mean, with, with good self-esteem comes a selfie stick, I feel like. Yeah, I, think I guess it comes there's hand a correlation there. There has to be. There, yeah. See, I have no selfie stick. I'm just like running around. I don't have a selfie stick. I either. refuse to do photos. My girlfriend hates it. She's like, we're going to do a picture. I'm like, no, no pictures. Um, <laughs> it's weird. And I just took this off on a strange tangent. It's but fine. anyway, uh, this is such a cool thing. So how long have you personally been involved in this? And sort of what do you think is your like big tie to this? How do you emotionally tie out to this? What's the connection? So I've always been in the fashion industry throughout my professional career. Um, I went to FIT in New York City. I'm originally from New York, so I recently moved to Chicago. Um, And I've always known that I wanted to take my background and my expertise and actually make a difference rather than just getting my clients placed in magazines and the typical day-to-day that I do in the fashion industry. Um, there's such a stigma attached to the fashion industry that it instills low self-esteem in young girls because of the pressures that that come along with it. Um, so I want to reverse that stigma. Too. I was going to say that you know I didn't want to like go down. I was going to let you take us down yeah. that road. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, because there is a, there is a, a huge correlation I think between what you see in the magazine and what you get in the children's face that they see that they don't look, or even adult women for that matter, or, or men too as well, right. uh, where they don't look like they do in the magazine. And so I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job and my self-worth goes down and all this. And I feel like this is a really, potentially, a really good way to not only help them with their scholastic achievement, but also help them in self-esteem and things, but also help them like center the universe and yeah. be like, listen, what you're going to see in the magazine is someone who's decided to dedicate their life to champagne and cigarettes and right. look this way, you don't look this way. That's a joke, sort of a knock, <laughs> on, knock on. No, one, no one's laughing at my jokes today. This sucks. Um, <laughs> now they're laughing. Uh, no, but seriously, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to sort of set the record straight and be like, you know what, not everyone looks the same. Right. And, and, it's, and I feel like that is one thing. So it's really cool to see someone who comes from the fashion industry to go back and say, like, listen, I noticed this, and now we're going to try to do something about it. Yeah, that's part of the activities that we do with them, too. We'll go through magazines with them throughout the workshop and really point out, again, the self-expression versus self-objectification um, and not so much point out what girls look like, but how they look like they feel. Like, yeah. does she look like she's dressing how she wants to? Um, does she look comfortable in her clothing? What does that look like? Just curiously. I, I just want to know, <laughs> it's like, maybe for my own personal selfish reasons, I want to know when when... when like we use the girlfriend as an example. When she comes out and we're going to dinner, yeah. what am I looking for to know that she's actually really pissed other than her telling me? What is? What should I know? Like, what I mean, I you can for? tell when someone just exudes confidence with what they're wearing. So that's when they're most comfortable is yeah. when they're showing that. Um, so we lead the girls through that and, and tell them the differences there and then also just help them reclaim their individuality. Yeah. You don't have to dress like what you see. Um, so the shopping portion, that's what we're helping them with. Our volunteers, we call them the girls' stylists, go and help them pick out an outfit that really fits their personality and describes who they are. And so that's why it's my favorite outfit, because the girls all yeah. get to leave in an outfit at the end of the day. That's pretty cool. Plus more. They usually leave with bags of I was going to say, I mean, <laughs> not to make that joke, but I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. You're going to walk out of here, you're going to walk out with bags of clothing. Right. Might this as well. is, well, I mean... <laughs> It, it's, is it discounted free? Is it like what's the? The clothing is free for the students. The program's yeah. free. Everything's That's awesome. free. So um, we work with a quite a few local stylists that when they do closet cleanses, they donate to us. We, we also, charge for the bag though. No. no just, <laughs> everything's free. You don't charge free. for anything. Everything's free. Well, it's like Walgreens here. It's not free, but you have to pay seven, for the bag. Is it like seven cents? Yeah. Or yeah. Do you want to be charged for a bag? I no, mean. I don't want to. Be. Yeah, I mean, I guess I have to. <laughs> who, won't break the bank. But. Who needs a bag when you leave Walgreens? I, I'm. <laughs> I digress. No, this is really not to take attention away from this. This is a really great cause. It's a really uh, cool way, I think, to impact kids, in particular girls in this age where I think that they are hard to reach. I mean, yeah. I just think it's a really tough time where I think they spend a lot of time within their own head and judging themselves. And it's like 
I could tell you, you know, you're, you're beautiful and you're smart and all these things. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. You don't listen to anything you say anyway. Right. So this is a great way for them to really experience it and, and, and get that. So very cool. Where do people go to find out more about this? Myfavoriteoutfit.org. We're also currently doing a crowdfunding campaign on Causebox um, for our LA expansion because we're going to be in Los Angeles for the 2017-2018 school year. That's awesome. So cool. Thank you so yeah. much, Lindsay, for coming Thank in. Thank you. This is great.